Good afternoon, everyone. Antarctic sea ice not melting like expected. And there's so many questions why. And now with Northern Hemisphere Arctic sea ice expanding to all-time recorded levels in the last two weeks, a plethora of excuses coming out from Southern Ocean, circumpolar currents to frontal ice zones that block winds to prevent melting, old water. They forgot about the circulation currents of the entire Southern Ocean. The upwelling bringing cold water that they forgot to include in the IPCC models. They forgot an entire ocean circulation system. If we jump to the Northern Hemisphere, Atlantic multidecadal oscillation dipping in the cooler waters at the depth of 600, 700 meters have suddenly made their way up to the surface. It only took three years. So get ready for gargantuan changes coming this winter. And if you have a chance, jump over to the mini Ice Age fan page, give it a like. I load up all the materials I research on my videos there. Major change is suddenly in the Arctic with all time record ice recorded in a matter of two weeks. It jumped up some places is up to 15 feet thick already right near the Alaskan North Slope coast. This also begs the questions of why the Antarctic sea ice models failed. The opposite of what they predicted is happening. So all these excuses are starting to come out now. They forgot the entire Southern Ocean circumpolar current, which is a natural variability cycle. Now, how did they forget that? And they blamed it all on CO2. They had to come out with different excuses. One of the newest is this frontal ice that you see here. They're blaming it on being old ice that's preventing new ice from slipping into the ocean. And that expands cracks where sea ice can then grow behind the front ice. Now, wait a second. I was told everything was calving off and it was spilling and going to raise ocean levels. I guess that's not true now. Annual mean sea surface temperatures, you know, a little bit cooler around in the summertime there, even noted by NASA studies. Coming back to the geophysical constraints, back to that frontal ice zone, saying it's blocking wind and the topography. There's so many excuses given now. Even old water is tossed in, the old water. They forgot that there's circulation from the bottom of the ocean upward to the surface level. And that will prevent melting, except where there's volcanic activity under the ice shelves. They don't take that into consideration either. This old water excuse just blows my mind. They say with rising carbon dioxide, you would expect more warming at both poles, but they can't explain why it's not melting in the Southern pole. And they're gonna to need to start explaining this week why we just gained record ice across the Northern hemisphere as well in the Arctic Circle Basin. There's a whole mishmash talking about ocean ridges and topography and depths of water and circulation patterns that are now trying to explain why the Antarctic ice shelves are growing as well as the continental ice. Nice paper here talking about the Southern Ocean warming delayed by the circumpolar upwelling. You know, the IPCC should have been on that. I can't believe they forgot an entire ocean circulation system discounting literally a sixth of our planet in a natural cycle to lie to you to come out and say that all these changes are based on your driving, your burning of candles, your burning of wood stoves that keep you warm in the winter. And they forgot a sixth of our planet's natural system. Jumping up to the Northern hemisphere, the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, cooling on its own. This is the area from approximately 40 North over to zero East across the Atlantic basin. Cooling everywhere measured from the sea surface temperatures down to 700 meters, it's all starting to cool. Now this is a driver of our Northern Hemisphere climate system. So that's why these wheat failures are happening across Europe right now. If you take a deep look into this time series, the blue is cooler water. And at the very top, that's the surface temperatures. Notice on the right side, you'll see 2013, around 600 meters if you draw a line over there. Look how quickly that temperature gradient moved, that cooler water from 600 meters right up to the surface. That took three years. Now that circulation pattern's in play, so just from right now, it's gonna intensify. So from this point forward, 
just the natural cycles of the Atlantic Ocean, they're going to cool. And if you start tracking over the Atlantic multidecadal oscillation through the last 8,000 years, what they find are repeating patterns on about 60 to 90 year cycles that affect different parts of the globe with rainfall. Yucatan, Sahel and Africa, all the way even over into South America, Puerto Rico, Yucatan again. So you'll start to see wetter conditions in these areas. Some were going to dry out, but definitely look for gargantuan changes in weather patterns this year, especially when everything's cooling. And my next video is about this all-time record increase in ice across the Arctic Basin in the last two weeks. Unbelievable. It is 15 feet thick up there off the coast of Alaska already unexplained, unexplained except for natural cycles. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. As always with these crop failures that are coming along, you're going to expect higher food prices and there are a couple of traders across the planet that are focusing on the specific effects of these regional coolings. Bob over at Trade Genius is one of them. So reach out to him, drop him an email. He'll be happy to chat with you about what their strategy is.